Hello, and welcome to today's video. Let me ask you this. Did you know that some common supplements can actually harm your kidneys? Your kidneys are vital to your overall health, so it's crucial to take care of them. This is especially important if you have conditions like diabetes, high blood pressure, autoimmune diseases such as lupus, or if you're dealing with obesity. These conditions make your kidneys more vulnerable, which means you need to be extra cautious about what you put into your body. Now, here's something surprising. There are supplements on the market today that could potentially harm your kidneys. Before we dive in, make sure to subscribe to our channel and watch till the end to get the full list of supplements to avoid for the sake of your kidney health. While there are many to discuss, I've narrowed it down to four key supplements to keep this video concise and impactful. These are supplements you need to be mindful of, especially if you're already managing a chronic condition. Let's get right into it. The first supplement we're talking about is aloe vera. Now I know what you're thinking. Aloe vera is incredibly popular and known for its wide range of uses. It's used to manage everything from flu symptoms to glaucoma, liver fibrosis, scarring of the liver, and even eczema. Some studies suggest it may lower blood sugar levels, making it appealing for people with type 2 diabetes. Sounds amazing, right? But here's the issue. Aloe vera isn't all good. One of its lesser-known side effects is that it can lower your potassium levels, which is bad news because potassium is essential for maintaining healthy blood pressure. Even worse, Aloe vera has been linked to kidney failure. Yes, you heard that right. Aloe vera, despite its many uses, can cause significant kidney damage, especially for people with chronic kidney disease. If you're someone who relies on aloe vera regularly, this is your wake-up call to be careful. A review published in the Phytotherapy Research Journal, titled Aloe Mod. A review of its pharmacology, toxicity, and pharmacokinetics highlights how aloe vera can be toxic to the kidneys. The research is out there, and I'll link the study below for those who want to dig deeper. If you're currently using aloe vera, please monitor your kidney health closely. If you already have a pre-existing kidney condition, I highly recommend avoiding aloe vera altogether. The next supplement on our list is stinging nettle, a herb that lives up to its name. If you've ever come into contact with stinging nettle, you know how irritating it can be to the skin. It's also available in tea form, making it a popular choice for many. So, what is stinging nettle used for? Quite a lot, actually. It's commonly used to treat painful muscles and joints, eczema, arthritis, gout, and even stress relief. Its high iron content also makes it a go-to remedy for managing anemia. But here's where the trouble lies. Stinging nettle can cause acute kidney injury or even progressive kidney damage. Yes, even a natural herb like stinging nettle has its risks. If you're using this herb regularly, it's vital to pay attention to your kidney health. If there's any indication that your kidney function is declining, you should stop using it immediately. These are just the first two supplements that could harm your kidneys, and we'll cover more in the next sections. Next up is licorice root, a supplement that has gained a reputation for its numerous uses, but also for its risks. If you recall a previous video where I discussed supplements that raise blood pressure, licorice root featured prominently, and for a good reason. There's a direct link between high blood pressure and kidney health, which makes licorice root particularly problematic. The active ingredient in licorice root that raises concerns is glycerizin. This compound is known to irritate the kidneys and significantly impact blood pressure. Elevated blood pressure reduces blood flow to the kidneys, which can result in acute kidney injury. If left unchecked, this could progress to chronic kidney disease, a serious and often irreversible condition. Here's how it works. Glycerizin raises your blood pressure which in turn affects your kidney's ability to filter blood efficiently. If you're someone already dealing with high blood pressure, consuming licorice root 
can exacerbate your condition and place an extra burden on your kidneys. For anyone taking licorice root, it's crucial to be cautious and consult with a healthcare provider before continuing its use. Now let's talk about creatine, a widely popular supplement among bodybuilders and fitness enthusiasts. Creatine is often used to enhance muscle mass and strength, making it a favorite for those looking to bulk up or achieve a more defined physique. However, while creatine may seem harmless, it comes with risks, particularly for your kidneys. Here's the issue. Creatine by itself may be safe for most people, but when combined with a high-protein diet, the risks increase significantly. Many bodybuilders and fitness enthusiasts tend to consume high amounts of protein alongside creatine, which can overburden the kidneys. This combination can lead to kidney injury, especially if the kidneys are already under strain. To emphasize this, let me share a real-life example. An 18-year-old male who was using creatine for bodybuilding ended up damaging his kidneys. His condition, confirmed by a kidney biopsy, was diagnosed as acute tubular necrosis. This is a severe condition where the tiny tubes in the kidneys responsible for filtration are damaged. While this young man's kidney function eventually recovered after 25 days of treatment, the situation could have been much worse, especially if he had been older or had pre-existing conditions. The takeaway? If you're consuming creatine, it's vital to ensure you're not pairing it with an excessively high-protein diet. Moreover, if you're someone with chronic kidney disease or are on medications that are nephrotoxic, toxic to the kidneys, it's best to avoid creatine altogether. Combining creatine with these factors creates a synergistic effect, significantly increasing the risk of kidney damage. If you're using creatine or planning to, here's what you need to keep in mind. Avoid creatine entirely. If, one, you have chronic kidney disease, creatine puts unnecessary stress on already compromised kidneys, increasing the risk of further damage. Two, you're on nephrotoxic medications. Medications that are toxic to the kidneys can combine with creatine to create a synergistic effect, amplifying the potential for irreversible kidney damage. By avoiding creatine in these situations, you're taking an essential step in safeguarding your kidney health. While creatine remains popular in fitness communities, it's not worth the risk for those with underlying conditions. The supplements we've discussed in this video, aloe vera, stinging nettle, licorice root, and creatine, each have their own set of risks, particularly when it comes to kidney health. The list isn't exhaustive, and I plan to cover more potentially harmful supplements in an upcoming video. For now, remember this. Just because a supplement is natural or widely used doesn't mean it's safe for everyone, especially those with high blood pressure, chronic kidney disease, or other underlying health issues. Always research the supplements you take and consult a healthcare provider when in doubt. If you found value in today's video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends, family, and colleagues who might benefit from this information. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the upcoming follow-up video where I'll dive deeper into other supplements that could harm your kidneys. If you have any questions or thoughts, feel free to leave them in the comments section below. I'd love to hear from you.